Hello, and thanks for taking the time to listen to this message. My name is Paul McCauley, and I'm going to read to you the words of Psalm 23. Psalm 23, it's a Psalm of David. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The well-known and well-loved words of Psalm 23. And as you read it, it's not difficult to see why this passage from the Bible is so well loved. It contains really what I think every heart craves. Uh, it tells us about contentment in life. Uh, David, the man who wrote it, he says, I shall not want. He had perfect contentment. And that contentment wasn't based on money. It wasn't based on power or anything like that. This was a contentment that was far deeper, a contentment that the world couldn't give and that the world couldn't take. And not only does the psalm tell us about contentment in life, but it tells us about comfort at death. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He says, when I walk through that valley, I have comfort. He says, thou art with me. And uh, it not only has contentment uh, in life and comfort at death, but also confidence for eternity. He says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, I would just ask you, can you think of anything better than having those three great blessings? Is that not what you long for, just to have contentment in life, no matter what life throws at you, just to have that deep-seated, real contentment and to have comfort at death, to be able to face it without fear and to have confidence for eternity, knowing that all is well for the other side and that you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's what David had and that's what the message of the gospel offers. You see the key that unlocks these blessings is found in the first five words of the psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. And it is because David could say, the Lord is my shepherd, that he had these blessings that Psalm 23 talks about. So I want us to examine these five words uh, at the beginning of the psalm. First of all, David says, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord. You see, David didn't have these blessings because of himself. He didn't have these blessings because of his birth. He wasn't born in the shepherd's fold, so to speak. No, he was born outside the shepherd's fold. In fact, he speaks about his birth in Psalm 51, and uh, what he says about himself is true about all of us. He says, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. You see, David, just like all of us, was born with a sinful nature. He was born at a distance from God. That is true of us all. That's why the Bible says you must be born 
again. So David didn't have these blessings by his birth, nor did he have these blessings by his life. It's not the case that David, born outside the fold, worked his way into the shepherd's fold. He didn't earn uh, these blessings by being good. No, there's a, another verse in the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, and verse 6, it says this, All we, just like sheep, have gone astray. You see, the life that we've lived isn't the life that brings us closer to God. It's a life that takes us away from God. If our birth means that we are sinners, our life means that we are guilty sinners. In our life, we have broken God's law. And uh, we have incurred his wrath. We deserve his judgment. If we get what we deserve from God, uh, it will not be heaven we go to, but rather it will be hell. So many people are depending on the life that they have lived uh, to give them access to heaven when life is over. But friends, the life that we've lived is not the answer. It is the problem. The life that we've lived won't get us into heaven. It will only keep us out because in the life that we have lived, we have sinned against God. No, uh, David didn't have these blessings by his birth, nor by his life, but rather he had them because of Christ's death. You see, the previous Psalm, Psalm, 20, Psalm 22, gives us the basis for David having these blessings. Psalm 22 is a wonderful prophecy of the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it tells us about how the Lord Jesus, uh, the one who was God's eternal son, the one who was absolutely perfect, Psalm 22 prophesied how he would be forsaken by God, how he would be left alone. And why was that? Well, the reason is because of us. The Lord Jesus would bear the punishment and experience the banishment that we deserve because of our sin. The Bible says Christ died for our sins. He experienced God's judgment. He entered into God's wrath. He paid sin's penalty and proved it by rising from the dead. And because of that, there is a way back to God from the dark paths of sin. There is a door that is open and you may go in at Calvary's cross is where you begin when you come as a sinner to Jesus. And so David wasn't depending on himself to get these blessings. He was depending on the Lord. In another Psalm that he wrote, Psalm 27, he says, the Lord is my salvation. And so David didn't have these blessings because he was good enough. But rather he realized, I'm not good enough. I can't be good enough. And he just put his hope in the Lord. He made the Lord his only plea. And uh, that's how you will enter into these blessings. By abandoning trust in yourself or in your religion. And putting your trust in the Lord to grant you forgiveness and a relationship with God. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Then he says, the Lord is, is my shepherd. You see, this was something that David was in the present possession of. You see, friends, salvation is not merely some future prospect. But salvation is something that you can have and enjoy right now. You see, the, the Bible promises that when someone puts their trust in the Lord Jesus for salvation, uh, the Bible says not only will you get heaven in the future, but you'll get new life here and now. You'll enter into your relationship with God right now. Uh, you'll, you'll enter into friendship and peace with God and uh, experience his blessing and uh, his presence in your life. 
And so this is something that you don't need to wait for. You see, the Lord Jesus has done all the work. Uh, He's fully paid the price and salvation is offered to you right now as a gift that you can receive right now. You don't need to wait. And I would say to you, you, you dare not wait. You can have salvation right now, but you can miss it as well. This present opportunity that you've got to be saved is a passing opportunity. And so I would urge you, don't put it off any longer. Uh, If you ask anyone who is a, a Christian, if they've got any regrets about becoming a Christian, they would say, the only regret I've got is that I didn't get saved earlier. Every moment you wait is a moment you waste. It is a real and a wonderful thing to be saved. And so David says, the Lord is my shepherd. Then let's think uh, a wee bit further uh, through the, the statement. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. See, this is something that is intensely personal. Uh, The Bible says that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, right? That's God's intention. That's God's desire. That tells us of the Savior's uh, ability that he, he wants to be and he can be the Savior of the world. But David, uh, he said about the Lord on one occasion, he says that he is my saviour. You see, you have to make it personal. The fact that the Lord would be and could be the saviour of the world really does you no good unless and until you receive him as your own. You have to personally receive the Lord Jesus for yourself. You have to come to him and uh, receive him as your very own Savior. You see, salvation is something that is just between you and the Lord. That's, that's all we have in this statement. There's the Lord and there's David. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. Uh, I was brought up in a, a Christian home. My parents were saved, right? They had received the Lord as their Savior. That didn't mean he was my Savior. Right, They had each had the experience of turning to Christ in repentance for salvation and uh, coming to him for forgiveness. That meant they were forgiven. That meant they were going to heaven. It didn't mean I was forgiven. It didn't mean I was going to heaven. Uh, there, There came a point in my life when I realized I have to take this step for myself. Friends, you can't ignore the Lord Jesus. And receive salvation. Uh, You can't bypass Christ and land in heaven. If you're going to be in heaven uh, when, when life is over, well then in your life you're going to have to have dealings with the Lord Jesus. You're going to have to come to him. Uh, Peter in Matthew chapter 14 Uh, Peter was sinking in the sea and the Lord was there and Peter cried out, Lord, save me. See, it's just between the Lord and me. The man who was crucified beside the Lord Jesus, he said, Lord, remember me. It's a personal thing. It's between the Lord and me. It's between the Lord and you. Then finally, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. He's my shepherd. And that means that I'll never be lost. If the Lord is your shepherd, then you will never be lost. In John chapter 10, the Lord Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And in that chapter, in verse 28, he says, I give unto them, to those who are my sheep, I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone pluck them out of my hand. What a wonderful assurance that is, just to know that you belong to the Lord, that he's your shepherd, and he will take you safely home to heaven. In Matthew chapter 6, uh, and or I beg your pardon, Mark chapter 6 and verse 34, the Lord Jesus looked over 
uh, a multitude and it says he had compassion on them because they were his sheep not having a shepherd he looked on them with compassion because they were lost just wandering through life in danger of perishing forever and you know that same lord he looks on you today and if you're not saved he looks on you with compassion you're just like a sheep not having a shepherd he's willing to be your shepherd today if you would just stop straying stop struggling and just turn to him for salvation may you do so let's pray our god and father we give thanks for this wonderful passage of scripture and we give thanks for the one who said i am the good shepherd and we give thanks that uh, there are those of us who can say truthfully the lord is my shepherd we pray that someone watching will enter into that assurance and relationship even today by receiving the lord jesus for themselves by bowing to him and trusting him as savior god grant it may be so in the name of the Lord Jesus we pray.